Well, greetings, Mr. Colazar's class. We're going to continue now with the factors affecting solvation. And what we're going to look at is we're going to describe the process of solvation. And as we're going, we're going to look at the effects of temperature, pressure, and polarity, or the IMFs, on our solubility. So the process, solvation, is going to be known as dissolving. So when you hear solvation, process surrounding each solute particle with the solvent particles to form a uniform or to form a solution. So our solute are the solids locked off in here and the particles get picked off one crystal at a time by the solvent and we'll see over here some of the red crystals have already been taken but the solute or the solvent surrounds and then removes one particle at a time. And that's the process of dissolving. Solvation is what that's known as. Now, in ionic solutions, just to have a couple pictures to draw at the bottom of your page to show this process out, the ionic solution, water has you know, a little plus and a little minus to it. So the negative part of water would be attracted to the positive part of an ionic substance. And then the positive parts of the water, where the hydrogen at, would be attracted to the negative portions. So one of our positive particles would be attracted to each of the negative sides as it dissolves. And each of the negative sides would be attracted to the positive part as that solution would break down. So to just at the bottom of that page kind of just draw out a picture representing the solvation. Now, don't need to write anything down here, but you're going to hear likes dissolves likes coming up, so water is a polar solvent. Um, that plus and minus is what it's going to be attracted to, uh, very much so for ionic compounds. Um, an excellent animation to kind of just show this out would be what we're seeing here is those salt crystals the sodium are the chlorine in the centers attracted to are the sodium in the center attracted to the positive and the chlorines attracted to the negative are the positive side and the sodiums attracted to the negative side each would happen one step at a time so how we can increase the top of the next page how we can increase the rate of dissolving to do that, we must increase the rate of collisions between the solute and the solvent. So different ways we can increase those collisions so we can increase the rate is by first off, agitation. Agitation is stirring or shaking, mixing up. If you're making Kool-Aid, you want to stir the sugar in the pitcher. So agitation increases our surface area. By increasing that surface area, by breaking down the solute, to smaller pieces makes it so it can dissolve faster. Usually increasing temperature helps us out for solids. However, never does it help out for gases. If we want to dissolve a gas into solution, say like for soda, you're not going to be able to dissolve more gas in there if the temperature is increased. And then for some solids, and we'll be looking at that later on. Solubility how much of a solute will dissolve in a certain amount of solvent at a certain temperature. So if we're soluble, it means we have high solubility. Insoluble means that there's low or no insolubility. So soluble, our, our first solution here, clear. We can see that it's all dissolved in there. Insoluble, we've got some chunks and some precipitate material that's not dissolved. In our gold packet, and a reference page you'll be getting later on also is going to show us some of our tricks with soluble versus insoluble. So ionic solutions and compounds as we're going we're going to look at like silver chloride, table salt, remember is NaCl, and then Kool-Aid is mostly a glucose or sugar, uh, but we're going to see that silver chloride is going to be insoluble and it's going to be on the next page we're going to talk about the uh, from our gold packet you'll have this list in your gold packet and what it says is that all of these make soluble 
So make sure a gold packet. All of these ions make soluble compounds. So if you have any of these, they're automatically soluble. Now all of our halides, chlorine, is soluble except exceptions, except when it's combined with silver, lead, and mercury. So, and then our other side, insoluble compounds with the exceptions. And so the exceptions would make them soluble. So if we see silver mixing with chlorine to make silver chloride, we'd see that that would be insoluble. Sodium mixing with chloride, all group one ions, sodium, are automatically soluble. So sodium and chlorine, when they combine together, are going to be soluble. Now other factors that affect solubility is polarity. We're going to use this term a lot, like dissolves like. And what we're saying here is polar dissolves polar. So if you have a polar compound and a polar solvent, a good example is water, they're going to be soluble. Polar compound is going to be insoluble and nonpolar. So nonpolar will dissolve nonpolar. So if you have a nonpolar solute, nonpolar solvent, you're going to get a soluble compound. Nonpolar will be insoluble in a polar solvent like water. And then for a good example to add in, ionic compounds are soluble in a polar solution. They are insoluble in a nonpolar solution. And that'll be one of the labs coming up that we're going to look at that idea. From polarity, one example we'll need is soap. Soap helps us out a lot because soap will help with a greasy plate. So as you're doing dishes or have a mess to clean up, greasy plates are nonpolar. So grease is nonpolar. And since water is polar, the grease does not dissolve well into water. And so what we use is soap, and soap allows us to have a nonpolar tail. So the tail is nonpolar. And the top part is polar. And what the soap does is the nonpolar edge connects to the grease. So here's our grease. And as it connects and, s connects and connects to the grease, it surrounds the entire grease particle. And then the polar outside part is what stays dissolved in the water so that the grease is allowed to be removed and taken away. Uh, this is the process for why soap helps us out with cleaning. Also, we'll talk about later on, you, know, you can almost think about these are cells in the human body, and as we're looking why those cells actually stay stuck together is a similar chemical process, but we'll look at that later on. Next factor determines solubility, temperature. Temperature, as we heat up for most substances, Solubility increases. Gases become less soluble as temperature increases because they're easier to escape. So for solids and liquids, you can usually dissolve more. Gases, you can dissolve less as temperature increases and those particles moving faster, more collisions. And our third one, pressure. Pressure really only affects gases. So pressure becomes more soluble as its own pressure increases. So more pressure gives us more gas that can be dissolved. Um, pressure has little effect or no effect on solids or liquids. So gases is only where pressure is. More pressure can push in to give us our push down to put more gas dissolved in. Now to do this, Henry's Law is going to help explain this. Henry's Law says that pressure and solubility are directly related. So as one increases, the other one's going to increase. Or one decreases, the other decreases. And so our equation for this, top of the next page, our page 5, says the solubility and pressure 
are directly related. So the beginning and end is what we're going to continue to look at that or at two different stages. So, you know, if we had some particles and if we decrease the volume, that pressure increases and that allows more particles to be dissolved into the liquid. And so Henry's law, a good example here is, you know, a soda water whatever it might be, our soda or pop, is that when you have a higher pressure when the lid's been in there, we have more particles dissolved in. When we open the lid, it breaks that pressure, decrease the pressure inside, so the bubbles start to come out because now there's less pressure in there. So we've went from a higher pressure to lower pressure so less particles can dissolve and that's when they start coming out. And our one problem to look at for today is to look at uh, using Henry's Law a refrigerated can of 7-Up has a solubility of 8.45 grams per liter and an internal pressure about 270 kilopascals. What would be the solubility if it's opened at 101.3 kilopascals? So that's at uh, standard pressure. So our first step is we have to identify solubility and pressure to begin with, pressure to end with, and what we're looking for is solubility. So our equation S1 over P1 equals S2 over P2 and we're solving for S2. So we're going to rearrange the equation S1 P1 or S1 P2 over P1 equals S2. Plugging in the numbers and units we have 4.85 grams per liter times 101 kilopascals divided by the 207 kilopascals. Kilopascals cancels out and our new solubility is 2.37 grams Per liter. Notice less pressure, we went down a pressure, so our solubility also went down. So that is our direct relationship. Less pressure, less solubility. We'll let you continue on with our problems on Henry's Law, and then we'll look at solubility and our solubility charts coming up next.